Hi, I'm Darren Heinrich, and in this video, I'd like to demonstrate a little bit of Wild Bill Davis's approach to playing the organ, which is very much the, you know, Hammond organ as a big band style. So Wild Bill Davis grew up in Missouri and Kansas, and his mother was his first piano teacher, but he wasn't too interested, apparently, in playing the piano until he heard Fats Waller. And then he gets uh, a job after school running errands so he can pay for lessons from a professional teacher. And that's how he gets started as a pianist. After school, he goes to Wiley College in Texas and he studies composing and arranging. And he gets a job with Milt Larkin's orchestra. Apparently he played some guitar with Milt Larkin's orchestra, but there's no recordings of that. But it'd be certainly interesting to hear him play the guitar. Around 1941, he moves to Chicago and he starts getting arranging jobs. He writes arrangements for Lionel Hampton and he also writes arrangements for Earl Hines when Charlie Parker and Sarah Vaughan were in the band. And then in 1945, he gets his big break when he joins Louis Jordan's famous jump blues band and he plays the piano for Louis and writes a lot of arrangements and including big hits like Choo Choo Chaboogie. And around about the same time, he orders a Hammond organ, but he has to wait until 1947 because while, you know, in 1945, when World War II was still raging, the Hammond Organ Company is busy making parts for the US military, having ceased making organs altogether. So, 1947, he gets his first Hammond organ. It costs him 2,290 US dollars, which is an extraordinary amount of money in those days. But I can't help but notice that a lot of pro keyboards still cost around 2,000 US dollars these days. So perhaps we shouldn't complain about the price of um, organ clones, for example. Anyway, so 1947, he starts to move away from Louis Jordan. He still does some work for him, but he really is concentrating on that Hammond organ. I think he's based in LA at this stage. Um, and then in 1951, he does some of his earliest recordings, actually with Louis Jordan. So Go and check out Wild Bill with Louis Jordan playing tunes such as Tamboritza Boogie and Lemonade. I think that's these are really interesting recordings. And of course, he starts his first Hammond organ trio. So I'm going to break down the basics of Wild Bill Davis's organ style. I do not claim to be an expert in what he does, but I've checked out enough of uh, his big band playing to incorporate bits of that into my own playing. And I think you'll really dig it and find it a great way to uh, expand your chordal vocabulary on the organ. Let's check it out. So that's the basics of Wild Bill's introduction to Lullaby of Birdland. And let's just pull that apart a little bit. Very slowly, it's this. Okay, so this is a basic arranging 101 um, from the time of Wild Bill Davis. Um, all the jazz arrangers knew how to use this block chord technique and give it to, you know, like the saxophone section, for example, or perhaps the trombones. Um, and a lot of these early organists, such as Wild Bill or Milk Buckner, um, they used the organ um, in order to really test their arrangements because they had the brass sound up here and the trombones 
down here and then and then the saxophones here like the texture of the Hammond organ allows them to kind of hear or pre-hear what their arrangements are going to sound like you know within reason of course um, but while Bill definitely saw himself as an arranger and when he thought about playing the organ you know he's famous for having said to TC Filer I'm not playing organ I'm playing big band so let's have a look at the at the harmonic techniques that are going on here um, because it's not your usual everyday kind of chord scale relationships that I'm sure many of you um, are very very familiar with so the basic scale that is being played is what's called the A minor 6 diminished scale. The A minor 6 diminished scale. It's quite a mouthful, isn't it? And it's similar to your melodic minor. Okay, that, that scale that gives us you know, that chord. Um, except we add a note. We add a note between the 5th and the 6th degree. One more time. Okay, so now what that scale gives us is a really incredible internal structure where every chord is either a minor sixth chord or a diminished seventh chord. So if I can harmonize, um, or let's say while Bill would harmonize, all of the notes in that scale with either of those two chords, either an A minor 6 or a diminished 7. And that diminished 7th chord is really an E7 with a, with a flat 9. So it gives us, you know, it's implying a perfect cadence. Every time we move by step, for example, just to take the first three chords in the scale, we're really implying a perfect cadence. See how that works? But up the chord scale, you know, we get A minor 6, E7 with a flat 9, A minor 6 with the root on top, E7 with a flat 9, A minor 6 with the third on top, E7 with a flat 9, A minor 6 with the fifth on top, E7 with a flat 9, A minor 6. So, so that's the basic way that he's harmonizing this song. So that introduction that paraphrases uh, the melody to Lullaby of Birdland. Is mostly made up of that scale until we get to the final E7 chord. So there's our diminished 7. And then just a regular E7 in first inversion. And from that point on, um, we have just a standard turnaround of, you know, A minor 6, which is F sharp half diminished, to B7 with a flat 9, and then E7 with a flat 9. Pretty cool, huh? You know, to be able to play all of those chords and harmonize a melody within that scale, all with, you know, two structures. Of course, it's quite taxing to play, um, you know, but it will certainly help you get, 
your you know close voicing things together, especially if you're coming from piano and you're used to playing you know wider voicings, voicings perhaps based upon you know largely made up of fourths. Um, I certainly found that making the transition from jazz piano to jazz organ, you know, you've got one hand pretty much to play the chords. However, this, this is probably the most amazing thing about Wild Bill Davis is that I think a lot of the time he's using his feet for the bass line and he is doing another standard arranging trick in that he doubles the melody with his left hand. I should do that with a Leslie on fast. So isn't that amazing? He does, you know, a big part of his gig. You know, if you listen to the to the Live at Birdland record, I think that's the basics of the sound that he's got his foot on the pedals, you know, um, and both hands playing this big band thing on the upper manual. That's very physically demanding. Um, and I think it's something that we kind of forget a little bit about Wild Bill. And, you know, given the paradigm that he was working in um, and his roots as, as a big band arranger, and, you know, expert at playing boogie-woogie piano. I think it's really incredible. Go back and have a listen to Wild Bill, um, or if you haven't listened to Wild Bill yet, I think you're in for quite a treat. Is it something that I want to add to my um, artistic expression um, to a big degree? No, but I found that checking out some of Wild Bill certainly helped. <laughs> helped me with comping on the lower manual, which is something that I love to do, um, and gave me a whole lot more uh, ability uh, to express myself, to create variations behind a soloist, for example, or to comp my own solo. <laughs> So there's the basics of Wild Bill Davis's shout that he plays on the bridge of Lullaby of Birdland. And so let's have a look at how um, this is put together. He's using a very, very similar, in fact, identical arranging technique um, to his introduction. So the, just the basics of this um, chord progression in the bridge of Lullaby of Birdland, it's a... It's a 2-5-1 to D minor, E half diminished, A7 with a flat 9, D minor 6, or D minor 7 if you like, and then that becomes D half diminished, to G7 with a flat 9, and then C major. So that final one's a minor 2-5 to C major 7. Um, just like Cole Porter would do, Cole Porter was, you know, really keen on that chord progression. You know, songs like Night and Day have that built into their structures. And so, the first 2-5-1 to D minor is harmonized using the, the D minor 6 diminished scale. Gosh, that's a... It's a mouthful, isn't it? The D minor six diminished scale. But, you know, um, despite the complicated label, it's just a melodic minor scale with an added flat six. So the chords that that implies when we build chords uh, from that scale is we either have a D minor six or an A7 with a flat nine.
Okay, so let's have a look at how Wild Bill harmonizes um, his little shout that he plays on Lullaby of Birdland. So the first thing that he does um, is a fairly common thing, and it's, it's to ignore the, the two chord and just play the five. He still keeps the left hand or the or the foot 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 bass playing two five one, but the way he harmonizes the you know the melody very slowly. I'll put the Leslie on fast. So so here we just got the A seven with a flat nine in two inversions, and then. What he instead of going, I think he's playing just changing the melody note, and that's something that Barry Harris calls uh, the borrowed note. So he's borrowing the you know that F note would normally be harmonized by the D minor six chord, right? But he's on the A seven, and he borrows a note from the D minor six. And so what that gives us is A7, flat 9, and a sharp 5, which is such a important sound in minor key, you know, harmony. So, and I, I guess it makes it a little easier to play. So that's the first part of it. Now, for the next part of um, that shout, uh, while Bill's using the minor six, C minor six diminished scale, where everything is either um, a C minor six or a G seven with a flat nine. However, he never really gets to a C minor chord because the turnaround, it, you know, gets us to C major. So maybe we could just say, well, that's C major. C major six diminished scale. Because just like he did on the A7 or on the E half diminished, on the D half diminished, he ignores it and just plays G7 with a flat nine. There's C major six. So the second half of that is. Now, yet again, I think he's playing all of it. I oh, see what I did then? I cheated and, and, and played the scale. So here we end up very briefly. So there's G7 with a borrowed note, yeah, from the C major six uh, diminished scale. So yet again, that's a really demanding way of playing. And he's got his feet playing the bass that's incredible. Wild Bill was truly a master of the organ. And I guess, you know, that kind of rings true, you know, especially when he's allegedly said to Jimmy Smith, ah, oh, it'll take you 10 years to learn the bass pedals. Well, um, <laughs> I think he was serious, you know, to play all of those block chords, which are, you know, they put a lot of pressure across the bridge of the hand in order to play those. Um, of course, later on, uh, you know, Milt Buckner was a, a master of this, and uh, he influenced uh, George Shearing, who probably took the block chord style on the piano uh, a lot further. However, you know, a lot of pianists tend to play what's called drop two, where we have like a, let's just say, you know, the C6 scale. Instead of playing it like that, drop two would be dropping the, the note second from the top. And it gives you a much more mysterious sound. So anyway, that's a little bit about how Wild Bill Davis puts together his fantastic, energetic approach to playing the Hammond B3.